Good day, everyone, and welcome in. Well, this is episode three of our auto cannon, the 90 millimeter gun placed on top of the Lancia truck gun platform, and it'll be set in North Africa. Well, don't be fooled by these opening scenes. Yes, we're doing a little bit of chipping here with some acrylic paints just to get a little bit of wear and tear. But the focus of this episode is going to be squarely on the use of oil paints. Throughout this episode, I'll be using oil paints. We'll do a little bit of a longer shots, a little bit linger longer, as they say, and really kind of describe at least the way that I like to use oil paints. Okay, well, here we go. One of the very first things that I learned as I started putting this model together and things started, you know, getting into place was this is a unwieldy, ungangly type of a model to work on. These outriggers, the support, support arms for firing position, they really make it difficult to find the proper angle in which to, to work on, on things, and especially when trying to film at the same time. So let's get started. I'm going to do a little bit of warm-up, if nothing else, just a little bit of work around the edge of the gun platform. And here I'm just adding a little bit of coloring, if nothing else, just to kind of give it a little bit of a worn, scuffed type of an appearance. Um, the colors are basically, I'm using shadow brown, sepia, and ochre are the primary colors that I'm using around the edge here. I tend to stay away from using rust or rust colors, um, unless I'm really rusting out a project. I just find that for my taste, I'd rather try to do a little bit of that distressed type of a, a feeling or that distressed type of a look, trying to use other different types of colors. And the ochre and the browns work really well for that situation. The process throughout this entire video is going to be the same. Apply the colors using a fairly, I think it's a number one brush that I'm using right here. Just adding little dots of color here and there. And then I'll go back with a brush that's a clean brush maybe a little bit moistened with a little bit of thinner, that's thinner in the cap behind there, that little pop cap, and just a little bit of dabbing with a clean brush just to kind of blend some of the colors. And I'll do that repeatedly on areas because I want to blend up layers of colors and layers of different types of effects. So after fighting with the foam blocks for a little while, I realized sitting right next to me on my workbench is the octopus, one of these very nice modeling jigs. So I went ahead and rearranged my model and now we'll be using something that's a little bit more, I don't know, purpose built um, to help me support the model in this kind of, like I said, it's a little bit of a difficult model to work on just because it's hard to get into all these different angles. And it's a little bit, I wouldn't say fragile, it's just a little bit hard to handle. And like I said, hard to find the proper angle in order to do painting. And especially, like I said, doing painting while on video. As you can see, I've done a little bit of work on the gun pedestal here, primarily just using those same colors, the ochre, the sepia color, and I've, I've put a couple of different layers on. And now I want to refine or define some of these surface features. And so I'll just do a little bit of careful, it's not really a pin wash, it's just a little bit of drawing, if nothing else, of color around some of these different elements. And then I'll blend them back. One of the things that I wish I would have done or not done uh, was basically in my haste to kind of move forward with the construction is that I went ahead and attached the gun platform, the pedestal here and such. I wish I would have left that as a separate item and been able to paint and weather that separately. I think that would have helped a lot with just the whole handling of this model as I'm trying to work on the painting. But it's securely in place now, and so it's a matter of trying to find, like I said, the proper angles and get my brush into those little places. Well, here's where this video is going to take a little bit of a, I don't know, we'll call it a slow turn. I want to be able to focus in or at least share with you how I approach using oil paints. And so I thought what we would do is just let this video more or less roll over this door area here as I work on it. And that way you can see the process in its entirety. And I'll try to describe what I'm doing along the way. So I'm beginning with what are, I guess they'd be called little chips. This is oil paint, it's sh the shadow brown color. It's a very dark brown colored paint. It's perfect for doing this type of work. And the paint is nearly dry on the brush. So the points, as they touch the surface of the model, they're very, very sharp and very defined. So it's very much like using, say, acrylic paints to do the same type of an idea. But over time, I'll continue to work these little points, these dots, these scratches and 
and they'll transform into a little bit more. They'll transform into more smudges and, and scrapes and discoloration. And again, that's what I'm looking for to do on this, this model. But to begin, just kind of laying out the outline here with, with these little scratches and, and chips. Next, as I said, we'll just blend them back just ever so slightly. And it's a very light touch and the brush itself is nearly dry. I, I'd be surprised if there's any moisture at all on this brush the way it's going. What I'll do from time to time is take it off to the side and I'll just wipe it down on the paper towel just to remove any of the excess paint that it's accumulated. And then it's time to come back in and just do a little bit of this color. Now, again, this is that ochre color. So it's ochre mixing a little bit with that shadow brown. And if you remember the reference photographs I've talked about before, I really like that oily, greasy, grimy type of appearance, especially for these North Africa vehicles. And I'm finding that those two colors, especially worked in combination, are really good for producing that type of really worn and caked on and smudged type of appearance. And you can see, once again, I'm using the blending brush and just moving some of those colors around ever so slightly. As you can also notice, a lot of those first chips that we did at the very beginning, those have many of those have gone away, and that's fine. I'm not one of these people who likes to necessarily over chip models, um, but we do, do need to have some definition. And in many cases, chips provide that that necessary bit of delineation on different body parts. So chips is a nice way of making, you know, your eye catch certain surfaces and panels. But you can also do that with shading and and shadows and, and different color tones. And that's what I strive for, especially when I use the oil paints, because it's it's a nice way of doing that in a, in a very subtle manner, or you can push it a little bit further, which this model, of course, is being pushed quite a bit further um, to make it quite pronounced. The door now is getting to a pretty nice stage. And if you remember from my last episode, I made kind of the quick mention that I like to bring my models up to about 80% complete and then finish the last 20% after everything's done. And that's kind of where I'm at at this point, especially with this door. There are certain parts of it that may look overweathered right now, but I'm not quite sure because the surrounding parts haven't been done yet. So I've got a clean and dirty and weathered and not weathered panels right next to each other. So if I bring everything up to 80% and then take a look at it, then I know where to go back and start adding a little bit more details or enhancing certain areas. Case in point, let me move over to the front part of the vehicle, the hood and the radiator and the side sidewalls here. And it's exactly the same process. Once again, I'm adding some of those chips and scuffs. Again, this is that shadow brown color. And you can see I'm using the edge of my brush and that's, that's real important. Oftentimes the tip of the brush diffuses the, the mark onto the surface. But I find that if you do like a scraping motion with the side of the brush, the edge of the brush with, that's loaded with paint, you can get much more natural types of scuffs and scrapes. Once I have that pattern established, a little bit of color now being added, and this goes back now into the weathering part of it, the dusty and the grimy and the gritty type of things. Again, the ochre color is working perfectly for this on this particular model, and I'm just adding that into some of the recesses. It just enhances those shadow colors and gives that effect of people putting their hands on this hood, maybe opening it up, working on the engine, getting it dirty, and the dust collects, and we've got these stains. Continuing to move around the model, let's do the roof. And, well, there's some slight ridges on this roof, and quite honestly, I may have overdone this a little bit. I mean, it's one of those places where it just looks so tempting and nice to add all these little bit of, bit of scratches and, and wear and such. And I could have done with less, but you know what? Let's have some fun here. So I start with, again, the oil paints, adding those basic scratches. And then, again, the side of the brush, it's almost like a dry brush effect using that scraping motion. And it just gives some detail and context and edging to the, the different shapes and the parts. Speaking of chips and, well, let's have some more fun. These stabilizer arms, I just... Well, they just look like they're just meant to be beat the heck. And so 
I know that if I was one of these gunners, I'd be stepping on these things all the time, climbing up and down this gun platform. And so I really felt like these could use some of that heavy wear and tear. I've turned once again back to the acrylic colors because these will be able to give those sharper shapes that I'm looking for for more of a chipped paint appearance. Once I have these chips established by the acrylics, then I'll come back in and use the oil paints and I'll and using the brown tones and some of the ochre and some of these other colors, they'll become part of and integrated into the finish rather than as they look when I first apply them, just sitting on top of the finish. Having worked my way around the model, I've got a pretty good sense and context of what this final finish is going to look like. And by comparison, you can see the scun platform, I really haven't done much work at all with it. Now it's time to give this a little bit of attention. It looks pretty stark and bleak at the moment. So once again, I turn to my favorite colors as I've been working on this model, and that would be the ochre, the sepia, and the shadow brown. And I use a little bit of the Windsor Newton charcoal gray from time to time as well. But those colors in combination really produce some nice, grimy, dirty colors. And that combination, those colors, is what I'm working into the crevices and the panels on the gun platform here to start to bring that to life and to give definition to this piece. Probably going to sound like a little bit of a broken record here, but it's exactly the same process I've used all the way through. The paints are applied. They're nearly dry. Of course, they've been on that little cardboard palette. And then I use a soft brush that's clean with just a very hint, minimal hint of thinner on it just to give it a little bit of moisture, if any. And then I just kind of dab and blend that back into the surface. And that is, that's really all it needs. It's important to keep your blending brush nice and clean so you can see me continually moving off to the side of the screen and that's just to remove the paint onto the paper towels. And then once you have those established, you can start adding a little bit more, I don't know, characteristics, nuances, whatever. So I've got a dust, dust tone and I'll start working those into some of the corners and crevices as well. And that will start bringing out that dusty, dirty effect over the top of this grimy, gritty effect. Oh, effect after effect after effect. Sounds complicated, but as you can see, it's actually very, very simple and easy to do. Well, I'm going to set the truck aside for a little while and let some of those paints set up and dry. And in the meantime, I have a lot of other different parts and accessories that need to be taken care of. I've got these wheels and tires that I did a little bit of base painting early on. And so I'm going to take a little bit of time and hit those with a little bit of oil as well. Build up some of the preliminary dust and dirt effects before I actually attach them onto the model. Which basically concludes this episode and brings us to a nice transition to the next episode where we'll go ahead and start really putting this model together, put the gun in place, attach the wheels, um, get everything set up, do a little bit of the finished painting here and there. There's a few more, like I said, accessories that need to be added. And then it's time to start working on a base. I'll probably, we might get to that next in the next episode, a base, and I've got some figures. So I've got, like I said, a couple of different ways we can go with the next couple of episodes depending on how far I get. If you do like this episode and this channel, please hit that like and subscribe. That really does help get out into more and more places and improves the channel. If you like this channel a lot and would like to support it even further, I do have a Patreon page and the link for that is below. We're doing some fun things over on Patreon, including I've been producing a few of these longer form videos where I will take maybe 20 to 30 minutes on a very specific technique and a very, maybe a very specific area of the model and just let the camera roll and do almost like a stream of consciousness type of voiceover. So it goes more into depth of what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about doing. And so I'll continue to do those on Patreon. And until the next episode, take care, happy modeling, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.